Welcome to Heartland Dual Sport. In today's video, we're essentially doing an 8,000 mile review. We're trying to get geared up for spring riding. It's been so cold here. In fact, my intentions was when I wrote this video out the other day, we were, I was gonna go take you for a ride and we was gonna ride around and then lo and behold, we wake up and it's raining like crazy. So in today's video, we're still gonna continue to do the 8,000 mile review and we're gonna break it down into four parts. Number one is gonna be an overall review of the bike. Part number two, mods that I've done to the bike. Number three is how the bike handles when you're on the roads or just even commuting back and forth to work. Number four, who do I think the bike is for? What has Kawasaki done to expand that tremendously in 2023? And then of course, we're always gonna have some bonus content. So let's get to the video. Again, guys, if you're new to the channel, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dale, and I'll be your host here on Heartland Dual Sport. We try to bring you a video every Thursday. Occasionally, we'll throw in a show and tell Monday video, but our goal on our channel is to have a video come out every Thursday. This week, we're gonna be doing a review. If you guys have not seen any of our other reviews, I'll put a link to a playlist right up here, and you can watch our reviews all the way from the very beginning to today. In today's video, I'm not going to go into all the specs that we've done in the past videos. Those videos will have linked up here. Today I'm just going to go through and kind of hit some of the highlights of the bike, why we still love it, why we think it's a great bike, and things that we've done mod-wise, which would be the next part, to make it a little bit better to fit our needs. Number one, the one thing that I just absolutely love about this bike is going to be the fuel range. I love being able to go out take these back roads and if you see a road up to your left and you're like, I wonder where that goes. You've got the fuel range to ride that thing all the way to the end, maybe into the next town and you never have to worry about it. If you guys are coming from other bikes, like you guys know I used to have the DRZ in the past, it had a little bitty gas tank and you really had to watch your mileage the entire time you was on the road. So it kind of took a lot of the fun out of the trip. In fact, I nearly ran out of gas down in southeast, southwestern Oklahoma. That was a bad day, and luckily there was a guy at the farm co-op store that gave me some gas. Um, I went ahead and gave him 20 bucks, which back then gas was a dollar a gallon, but it was still worth not walking. The few times that David and I were able to go ride this last year, he was on his Honda, same deal. The Honda is a great bike. Again, it's limited by the gas range. Once you start hitting around that 80, 90 mile mark, you have to find a gas station soon because it just doesn't have the fuel range that this bike has. Now, granted, this bike is much heavier. The heavier, like I've mentioned in some of the other videos, the weight of this bike makes it so much more pleasant to ride when you're riding on these interstates or you're taking some of these back. Let me back up because nothing's fun about this on the interstate. <laughs> The weight of this bike is so much better when you're riding some of these old highways when the 18-wheelers are passing you, or if you're in a place like where I used to be, the wind is always blowing in Oklahoma. This bike feels a lot more planted when you're riding, especially with transverse in the wind, or you're riding in crosswinds. It's just a lot easier to ride. One of the next things that I want to talk about real quickly and one of the bigger improvements in my mind is when KLR came out with the fuel injected 650 when they came out with this bike they fuel injected it and me to me that is one of the greatest improvements of the bike all, overall. Now I know we're gonna have some of you old school guys that have rebuilt the carburetors and I've done my fair share in the past as well but I do like the simplicity of the fuel injection you don't have to worry when you're going into the mountains or down in the valleys or any of that stuff your bike just runs really good with the fuel injection I know there was a few quirks with a few people who had some bikes maybe with some cold starting issues and some other stuff but I believe all that stuff's been worked out again back to the bike as you can see I've still got the stock mirrors on it, I've got the stock handlebars, I've got pretty much everything on it stock. The only mod that I'll talk about that's, well, we'll get into that in the next part. Again, straight from the factory, the suspension on this bike is much better than the years past. It just does a lot better job handling a lot more weight than what the bikes used to handle. Years ago, if you was a skinny 16-year-old kid, 
that 2008 KLR had enough suspension to carry you around. If you was a full grown man and or if you wanted to take your wife or some luggage, you were looking into suspension upgrades. I just don't see that being a huge issue with these bikes. Again, I'm right at 200 pounds and I'll load, I believe my load out on the back is about 150 pounds between all three bags. So that's quite a bit of weight and it does just fine. Now again, you're not gonna be doing any supercross. It's not a dirt bike. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is from other viewers and they'll ask me, hey Dale, I'm really looking into getting this bike. I've been riding bike X. What do you think the KLR would be a great bike for me? And here's my generic answer and I answer this a lot, guys. This bike is awesome. I love the bike. You've got to keep two things in mind when you're looking at this bike. Number one, it's a budget bike, which means that it's not got the technology in the engine or the horsepower in the engine that a lot of the more expensive bikes have. This bike's never going to be fast, but it's a great bike. And like I explained to people, if you're going to be happy riding the back roads, not getting in a rush, going and seeing where that next road takes you, and maybe it takes you off to some guy's farm pond, who knows? then this bike is for you. If you want to get on this bike and you want to ride it from Texas to the East Coast or up to Michigan, this bike is for you. If you're trying to rat race around town, it's not for you. If your buddies, all of your buddies are riding the Hondas and especially now that they've got the, those bikes are so much more interstate worthy. And if they're going to be riding those bikes cross country on the interstates, you're not gonna have fun on this trying to keep up with those guys. This bike's just not made for that. Now, when I say this bike just didn't made for that, what I'm saying is, is the bike will do 75, it will do 80, but you're maxing the bike out at those speeds and it's just not pleasant to do. I've talked about it in some of the other videos. Again, we'll have a playlist up here for you guys if you wanna watch some of the other reviews. The bike does great. It really likes that 55 to 65 speed limit. And again, if you're like me and 99% of the time you're riding solo, and I are, I'm already kind of planning most of my trips this year are gonna be solo. I may meet up with some other riders across the country, depending on where we go. We've got several ideas and things planned for this year. And I'll stop right here. If you guys haven't subscribed to our channel, I'd love to talk you into subscribing to our channel. Again, we're gonna be bringing a lot more if you like the camping videos or any of the other videos that we're doing, I think you'd really enjoy the channel. And again, if you don't like this video at all, be sure to hit the dislike button twice. Because if you only hit it once, it's going to show a dislike. If you hit it twice, it undoes it. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right, guys. So next, the here's my favorite mod. We're going to go into phase two of this video, if you will. My favorite mod on this bike so far, bar none, is the Garmin GPS. We've done a video on that. Now, nah, you know what? We may not have actually done a video on the Garmin Zumu XT. And if we haven't, I'll get one done. I just can't remember if I've done it. That GPS was like made for this bike. The, here, I'm gonna tell you several things that it does for you when you're riding your bike. Number one, it hooks up with, if you've got a Cena or something like that and you're listening to your playlist, the Garmin will sink in to your headset. So. When you start running into these smaller towns and you're in your own little world, minding your own business, it'll give you a warning when you're coming up to a school zone. It'll give you a warning if there's traffic ahead or traffic hazards ahead. It'll even give you warnings about the weather ahead on your planned route. This thing does so many cool things. I know one of our trips that we went on this past summer, I got to the campsite and realized, hey, this is not a safe place. I'm not staying here quickly get onto the deal. You can pull up state parks in, that are in close to you. Within 15 minutes, I'd found another place to go. I was already on the road, and mind you, I was doing most of this on the road because I wasn't staying at that um, place that I originally stopped at. I did not even stop there. But this thing is so awesome. It's a great, great tool. I love it. It's right there. It stays charged. You hook it into your bike leave it alone, it'll record your tracks, it'll, it'll take care of you. If you start speeding, it'll flash up and let you know, hey, you're, you're, in a, you're speeding, uh, there's a 70 mile an hour zone and you're doing 72 or whatever. All those little features are actually really, really cool right there front and center. 
Next thing up that I feel like is a great safety device is that tire pressure management system. Just a cheap $40 deal. I know we've done a video on that and it really does. It kind of helps you keep an eye on your tires so that you don't have a blowout or if you are losing air, you know before you do have a blowout or something bad happens. The only other real mod that I've done to the bike is I've obviously I had to add some more power ports so I got one of those little cheaper Amazon $20 deals up here for some extra places to charge my cameras and everything else while I'm on the road. Next up is the luggage. The luggage is great for commuting if you've got the adventure model. The what I found works best for me if you guys remember I used to have the Honda Africa twin. I had all the Moscow Moto, the soft bags and the top bag. I prefer using that when I'm on the long road trip simply because I can get more gear in it. I've got a system in my brain already to where I have it all organized way before I ever leave. And that's just transferring basically everything that I used to carry minus a few tools that were Honda specific. Now I've got a few tools that are Kawasaki specific. Otherwise those bags are pretty much, they stay packed, they stay ready. And I don't want to carry that weight around all the time. So when I get home, I pull them off using the quick disconnect plates and I put the regular luggage back on. Now I can throw my camera gear in here, my fishing pole or whatever, and do the quick trips around town, which is what I was planning to do, minus the rain. Back to, we're gonna go into phase three now, phase three of this video. And it is, how does the bike handle? Overall on the highways, I'm super pleased with this. Like I say, you don't wanna really do a lot of interstate. It's just simply not fun. Back roads does phenomenal. Dirt roads does phenomenal. The gravel roads, it does phenomenal. Again, a lot of this I think has to do with the weight of the bike and how well it handles. I know me and David, he's on that Honda uh, 650. Me and him did a lot of the dirt roads together and some of those roads kind of went into to some sandy areas. The bike did great. His bike did fine well. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say that it didn't, cause it did. But I think the weight of this bike really kind of helps you. You're not doing as much fishtailing as maybe some of the lighter bikes might do or pick up the speed, one or the other. But overall, the bike does a great job. It handles well. It gives you a good road-worthy bike that you feel safe and comfortable on. A lot of the questions that we've been asked in the past is how does it do with two-up? I've only really ridden the bike with my daughters when I went out to the East Coast to see them. Otherwise, I typically don't have a girl on the back or a passenger on the back simply because my wife doesn't ride. She can't. Um, so we just, we just don't do that. Um, but again, most of the time I'm carrying at least 150 pounds worth of luggage. So if you've got a spouse in that same weight range or your girlfriend or whoever, you're not going to have any problems hauling them around. I know the one thing that everybody's consistently said that, d ha that does ride with a passenger Put the top box on the back because it's actually got a little bit of a backrest built in for your passenger. All the guys on the forum or, or the Facebook group have stated that that's been a deal changer, a life changer for their spouse or their significant other riding with them was the backrest. And then now you've got additional uh, top box to put stuff in. Instead of me carrying my top bag, they just got a top box. Okay. And then lastly, guys, we're gonna go over this real quick. Who do I think the bike is for? And I've got to kind of pause here and I've got to tell you a couple of things. I'm sure if you guys have been looking at the KLR very long, you know that Kawasaki came out with an S version in 2023. I've got to pause right here and number one say thank you Kawasaki for watching our channel. Thank you for listening to what we're saying on our channel and thank you for taking our advice on making this bike a lot broader range so that we can invite more KLR owners into the group and into this family and into this Heartland Dual Sport way of living. Because they've obviously listened, they care, and they came out with the short version this year. One of the things that a lot of guys were intimidated about on this bike is it does have a tall seat. Not only is it tall, it's wide. So it actually feels taller than it is because of the wide seat. My Honda 450, is actually a taller bike, but it doesn't feel taller because the seat is so narrow because it's more like a dirt bike, race bike type bike. So with that said, here's two major improvements that I know that Kawasaki's done. Number one, just by watching our channel, 
being involved with our channel and listening to us and listening to you guys and reading y'all's comments. They came out with the S version. I'm super excited about that. And then one of the other things that I just recently learned is the luggage rack system that comes on the new 2023 models is a little bit different than what we've got on ours. And it's more like a traditional luggage rack like you'd see on the Honda Africa Twin or the Triumph. And I think that's gonna open up a lot more doors for the guys that are gonna end up doing something like me. I leave the hard bags on for in-town riding and if I'm going on a long distance, I'd use the soft bags. Or if you guys just wanted to swap out larger bags, even the hard bags, you'd have that opportunity now with those new racks. I think that's pretty awesome that Kawasaki, I, they didn't actually reach out to me or call me, but I'm, I've got to go with they've been watching our channel. <laughs> Again, guys, that's about all I got for you this week. Next week, we're going to be doing some fun stuff. One of the things we're doing next week is we're gonna be doing the drawing for the giveaway. I'll put a link up here to these videos. Guys, we've got three drawings going on right now. It's not too late to go over, watch those videos, enter to win. We want everybody with a KLR to have an opportunity to win some carbon fiber, really cool gear this year. So we're gonna be doing that drawing next Thursday. Again, if you like our video, give us a big thumbs up. If you don't like our video, hit the dislike button twice. Make sure you hit it twice. Again, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. May you have a blessed week, and let's go ride.